Hello devs, Sid the IT guy here and in our last video we saw the basic usage of Laravel Cashier package in installation and some basic examples out of it. But in this video let's take a deeper look into it. So the first thing that you will see in this in this tutorial it would be the subscription page for the users that we, that we have built into the app. So usually it's a good idea to show all the history of the customers invoices and their cards but what if these details can be pulled directly from Stripe. Laravel Cashier package actually provides you a function to do this. If, um, and let's take a look into it. So on the app on the subscription page on the top right you will see this button called view invoices info and clicking on it would directly take you to the Stripe dashboard portal where you will see this information um, related to the customer. So here on the left side we can see said the IT guy partners with Stripe for simplified billing and on the right side we can see the payment methods, the billing information and the invoice history for the customer. Now this information is directly pulled from Stripe. This is not coming from our database. So therefore this adds a bit of reliability on Stripe's hands that the user can view the information and they know that the information is secure with Stripe. And to achieve this, a simple function was used on Laravel Cashier. Inside Stripe controller, you will see this function billing portal. So basically what we are doing here is just taking the author authenticated user at that point and we are calling this function redirect to billing portal on to the user. Now this is a Laravel cashier function that allows us to do this. Just a side note when you are setting this up, on the customer portal settings of Stripe, you need to activate this, otherwise this wouldn't work. So th that's what happened in my case, I activated it and it started working. Okay, next feature that we are going to talk about is the cancellation of subscriptions. So Laravel cashier provides some simple functions to cancel the subscriptions. All you have to do is cancel the subscription by calling the cancel method on the user model so in the so it's mentioned in the documentation where you can call the cancel method uh, for the first example which is right here and this will cancel the subscription now an important aspect of canceling subscriptions is the grace period that we have to keep in mind so usually what happens is when somebody pays your subscriptions on a monthly basis they have paid you for the 30 days uh, time period so let's say that the subscription was paid on the first of the month and they cancelled it on the fifth of the month. But you cannot cancel it, the subscription right away because uh, they are still allowed to use the application for the next 25 days. So th that's when the grace period uh, comes in and we, we can check this here with uh, user subscription on grace period. So on grace period will tell you that the subscription is cancelled but the subscription hasn't expired yet. This is an important aspect in the billing mechanism of the app. But in cases where the subscription needs to be cancelled like immediately, we can call the cancel now function which is down there and it will cancel it straight away and the function on grace period will return false after that. Then we have the cancel now invoice function which is fine. For resuming subscriptions, we can call the resume method on a subscription user model and the subscription which was paused earlier can be resumed effortlessly. Now, now the next aspect of our subscriptions package is the trial days method. So usually trial days are offered to people when they want to try out the product and not pay for the product straight away. So let's say that on the first of the month I came to the app and I started the subscription with two trial days. So the trial days would mean that the, on the first of the month the card won't be charged, on the second of the month it won't be charged but the subscription will begin on the third of the month and it will keep on charging the card for every third of the month. So usually trial days are offered as a free trial to the user to try out the product before they can decide if they want to pay for the product or not. And on Laravel Cashier, we have simple functions to determine whether the user is on a trial or whether they are not on a trial. So here we have these functions. So we can call the trial until method on a subscription um, object where we can pass a carbon instance and we can specify how many days we want and that will instruct Stripe to not start billing the card until that date is reached. And we also have the user on trial method and uh, if, if the subscription is on trial itself, then uh, these methods can be incorporated into our app for our usage. And uh, in, in some cases where the user wants to pay for the product immediately and without uh, completing their trial period, we have the end trial method uh, down here. So you can have that. And also we, we also have the expired trial method which will be used to determine if the user has completed their trial period for the product. Also we have the option to extend the trial for a subscription 
we can use the function like this where we can find the user with the subscription and then we can call the extend trial method on, the, on it. So the, the trial period for that subscription will be extended to a certain date. Now, the next part is handling the exceptions. Now, most of the time when you are building a product that has an external payment provider integrated to the app, exception handling becomes pretty crucial to the app because most of the time the people that provide their card information are usually wrong and banking rules change all the time which will decline the transaction that could be made on the card. So Laravel Cashier provides some kind of uh, exception handling on their documentation which is like this. Yeah. So Laravel Cashier provides you an incomplete payment type of exception which we can use to handle the exception thrown at the time of creating a subscription or creating a charge. So here's the example. In the try catch block, we are charging the user for $10 and using a card number. And in our catch block, we are especially catching the exception, which is of the type incomplete payment. And uh, this has to be imported like this, Laravel cashier exception, incomplete payment. So exception handling will make your app pretty stable to use. Uh, if any customer faces any kind of problem paying for the product, they will be shown a proper message and you can customize that to handle these exceptions in your app. And I forgot to mention there are some additional methods provided in the exception that you are going to catch, which is like this. If exception payment requires payment method, then you can handle it separately or exception payment requires confirmation, which is usually uh, the case with some kind of banks, then you can handle that as well. So, so the last thing that we have to discuss with Laravel Cashier is the webhook validation. Now webhooks become a crucial part of the app because usually what happens is we cannot keep polling Stripe for the subscription status every day. This will waste away our API buffer range and this is not a good practice anyway. So instead Stripe offers a webhook functionality where if the uh, Stripe charge on a card is successful, the Stripe server informs our server via a webhook that a charge has been made and we can carry out our operations. So Laravel Cashier provides a simple method for this and it is like this. So, so, so these are the kind of events that we can listen to it, whether it is customer subscription deleted or subscription updated or created and then creation of customer or whatever. We can run this command php artisan cashier webhook which will initialize that and then we can specify the URL that it will listen to. So the Laravel cashier package allows us to set a URL where we can direct Stripe to, uh, we can tell Stripe to fire the webhooks on that endpoint. So we can listen to it in real time and perform our operations on it. And uh, the API version also is quite important. Uh, make sure that it is up to the latest version of the webhook version. And uh, if we want to disable it entirely, then we can do PHP artisan cashier webhook disabled, flag disabled, I mean. And just one important bit, is inside the CSRF verify middleware, we have to add it in the accept array. Um, how it is shown like this because all the routes for the webhooks will be open from the Laravel side and Laravel requires a CSRF validation for the post request. So it's important to add this here. And uh, Laravel provides you event handler and event listener which you can use like this uh, which is defined um, right here. So we can create our own and we can carry out our um, events listeners and um, we can do the operations that we have to. Now, the webhook signature validation is quite important. So here they have linked a, uh, an article from Stripe. So it's basically you can select PHP here and the whole routine is right here. So you can use this function and you can determine whether the webhook received from Stripe is valid or not. So the last thing to keep in mind about the Laravel cashier package is it's just a wrapper around the Stripe PHP package so any function that is supported by the Stripe PHP package is supported by Cashier. I used it in the context of the Cedar and to create a product, which is something that Laravel Cashier doesn't support. So it has its limitations, but it's not a problem because we can use Stripe PHP uh, API functions instead to do the simple operations that we want to. And I will wrap the video here. Let me know if you liked the video, hit the like button or subscribe um, if you want to support the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.